for the opening, and then I will transfer to my colleague to be the chair for the closing questions, just to let everyone know ahead. Um, recording is on. So uh, just to keep in mind, uh, at some point, you're going to find in the chat the instructions to sign our mailing list. The, the person in charge is having connection problems. So uh, if you wish to subscribe to our mailing list or to our WhatsApp announcements group, that you, you're going to find the instructions on the chat. Uh, and for today, we're going to hear about mean curvature flow and foliations of hyperbolic three manifolds. I'm very curious. So, Vanderson, let's try and do it uh, for 50 minutes and then questions, if that's okay. Okay, thank you, Enrique. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for the invitation to talk here. My pleasure. So, Today, as Henrique said, I will talk about uh, two topics which at first seem to be very different, which are mean coverage flow and hyperbolic three manifolds, but they are linked by a particular result. So, in the first part of the talk, I will talk a little bit about the hyperbolic three manifolds, and in the second part, I will say something about mean coverage flow. Okay? Everything I will talk about is joint work with Marco Guaraco from Imperial College and Franco Vargas Paletti from Yale University. Okay, as I said, I will begin with hyperbolic three manifolds. So I have to say something first about hyperbolic surface. So along on the talk, I will fix this notation. SG will, will denote a close or interval surface of G nodes, at least two. So I have a picture of this. So I am interested in, in see the surface from the geometric point of view. So one thing we can do is uh, look to uniformization theorem, which says that for each conformal class on this kind of surface, there is a unique hyperbolic metric which represents this class. Of course, unique up to different morphisms. So, this result is saying that for each surface of this kind, we can realize the surface is a quotient of the hyperbolic plane by some Fuchsian group. A Fuchsian group you can think is a subgroup of the isometry group of hyperbolic plane, which acts freely in probably discontinuous, okay? So, this quotient is actually a uh, hyperbolic smooth manifold, okay? So, you can ask uh, in how many ways that I can do this construction? Mm. So, the question is how? Uh, how many hyperbolic metrics I can put on, on this kind of surface? So this leads naturally to the Tachinulli space. There are several equivalent constructions. In one of them, you can think of the conformal structures on the surface, and we quotient by the group of different morphisms, which are isotopic to the identity, or equivalent. You can think in the hyperbolic metrics on the surface, and we quotient by the same group. So, why we have to quotient by this particular group? Well, one reason is that if we quotient by the full different offense group, this this space has a nice structure, but not so nice. It is an orbifold. But if you restrict to the subgroup, actually the space has a structure of a manifold, which is different from to the Euclidean space of dimension 6G minus 6. So this space is better to work with in, with respect to analytical properties. Okay. So what I will do is use this construction to produce an uh, interesting class of hyperbolic three manifolds. These are called the Fuchsian three manifolds. 
So thinking in the bow model of the hyperbolic tree space. So on this model, we can realize a hyperbolic plane is a totally geodesic surface. And on the surface, I can think on the exponential normal map. So I take the geodesics. Uh, parting for the surface orthogonally. So in this way, I will foliate the hyperbolic space by equidistance of the hyperbolic plane. And now I have a, a particular uh, map with respect to these coordinates, I can write the hyperbolic map in this nice way. So, uh, T uh, denotes the, let's say the, to fix, if you fix T, you have a particular equidistance to, for T equals zero, I have the original uh, surface. So all the surfaces are uh, total ubiquitous umbilical surface. And now this allows us to do the following construction. Uh, as I said before, I, I can take some particular function group and quotient the hyperbolic plane by this group to produce a hyperbolic surface. Okay. Now with these coordinates on the hyperbolic space. I can actually extend this action to all the hyperbolic space. Okay. Uh, the idea is just uh, if you think in a point here and we look at the correspondent on the total region desk surface and then you, you extend the action on the natural way. Okay. So the good news is that. If you do this, the group is such that the quotient is a smooth hyperbolic tree manifold, which is very simple to understand. We have a split symmetry. So it is essentially this metric, but now here is a weak quotient by this group. We have the now the hyperbolic match on metric on the closest surface. Okay. So let's see. Picture uh, the quotient will be something like this, and something in some interesting properties of this model are the following. First, uh, if you look at this particular surface, which is the quotient of the original hyperbolic plane. This is the unique closed minimal surface on this manifold. Also, if you look at the equidistance of the surface, this produces a foliation of the manifold, and the foliation has the geometric property of each leaf is a constant mean, to, constant mean curvature surface. All right, can I, can I ask you something real quick? Because I think. Yeah, I yeah. Sure. How do you how do you extend the action to H three? Okay, you you have something. Yeah, you, you have an action on the on the sort of equator level. Yeah. The, so, yeah. so you produce this. You feel more things, right? Yeah. So you you do something like this. You can you want to act the group. On this guy, so you do this. Okay. I, I do what? You, you want this is this guy here now. You this is a point of the. I think you are writing on a black on the whiteboard, but we cannot see it. Ah. Let me see. You can see it now. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Take this point. This guy here is a point of the hyperbolic tree space. Okay. Okay. 
and you want to act by an element of the group, so you do this. Okay. Okay, so it's just the trivial action. Yeah. The trivial extension. Yeah, and, and you can see this with this extension, the group acts freely in properly discontinuous, everything is fine. Okay, so you just extend it trivially, if I get it right, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. Actually, uh, now I will remain on this slide to explain another a great property of these models. Uh, here, we have the boundary at the infinite of the hyperbolic three space, which is the sphere. This is very important, important to hyperbolic geometry. So now the total video desk disk has a boundary at this sphere at the infinite, which is a circle. So this circle divides the sphere on two domains, which I will call omega plus, omega minus. And the good thing is that actually we can extend also the action of the group to these two domains. They are invariant by the action. And we can consider the quotient. So we will obtain two Riemann surfaces. And the fun thing is that as Riemann surface, these two are equal. So if you think if you think about the taxonomy space, they they have the same conformal structure. Sorry. Okay. So they represent the same element on the taxonomy space. This will be crucial to the next class of manifolds I'll talk about. So the, the, we have the three interesting properties of these models. So the manifolds I am actually interested about is a class of deformations of this model. So usually what we do is we will define this class by some kind of quasi-conformal deformation, then we, we use this theorem in our state to see how to produce these manifolds. Uh, just to be quick, I will uh, state the theorem and use this as a definition of the models. Okay. So this theorem is by this very beautiful theorem by Bayer says the following: Consider the two elements of the tangential space of some surface of genus G. So there is a Jordan curve on the sphere, the infinite, of the hyperbolic uh, tree space. Of course, this curve divides the sphere in two domains because it's a Jordan curve. And there is a group associated to this curve which is a subgroup of the isometry group of H3. It is unique up to conjugation. Now this group acts on the hyperbolic space and on the sphere at infinity. If you uh, throw away the curve alpha. And now if you look at the quotient of the two domains on the sphere at infinite, they represent as Riemann surface uh, exactly the two class of the dictionary space I, I consider at the beginning. So the name is simultaneous uniformization is because of this on the original uniformization theorem, we, we uniformize a, a particular Riemann surface uh, with the steering, we can uniformize two at the same time. So this is a result about the Riemann surface. Okay, 
but we have a group which act, acts on the hyperbolic tree space. So we can think about the quotient. And the good news is that if you quotient, the, main, the model is actually a complete hyperbolic tree manifold and is, has exactly the same topology of the previous model, the Fuxian model. And if the, this two classes of the detection memory space are equal, so the model is exactly the one of the Fuxian models. So we can see these manifolds is the formations of the Fuxian model. So I will call this the quasi Fuxian three manifolds. Okay. Uh, one interesting thing to see is uh, what kind of curves we have. So, if the model is Fuxian, the curve is just a circle. But in all the other cases, actually the curve is not is not even rectifiable. So you can have a, a crazy thing like this right. of fractal nature. And, and it can have many crazy things. Uh, I will say more about this in the future. Uh, just to have some idea about how is the geometry of this model, I have this much less impressive picture. <laughs> but just to give an idea, the geometry will be we have two ends which open up which expand, and in the middle, I have a compact part, which I, I want to understand, okay? So, about these models, I know the topology, and I know the local geometry. So, what I want to understand is the global geometry of these models. And, and another particular class of hyperbolic tree manifolds I, I'm interested, are the so-called hyperbolic fiber tree manifolds. And we, we can obtain this using the quasi Fuxian models. Uh, is, a, is a very important step on the work of Thurston on hyperbolic tree manifolds. He did the fault construction. And you can consider set sequence of quasi Fuxian tree manifolds which converge to a periodic hyperbolic tree manifold. So, in the limit, we will obtain something like this. Now, since the model is periodic, we can quotient, and we will obtain a tree manifold, which is a fiber bundle of the circle, and the fiber is a surface is, is exactly the surface of genus G. Okay, and, and the, we will know that the, the vibration is not trivial, okay? So, uh, actually, first we construct the, these models, then you take the covering, which is periodic, and then we will obtain the sequence. I will do the, the opposite way here, okay? But the, there is this uh, relation between the, the, these two models. Okay. And the, the question is the same. I know the topology of this model. I know the local geometry. I want to understand the global geometry. So, what can you say? So, I, I think the first mathematician which uh, thought about uh, the global geometry of these models was Karen Ullenbeck. And a first observation she did was the following. Consider one of these models. Either I have a quasi function manifold or a fiber bundle as before. Uh, uh, now here, uh, observe that I can think also uh, of the quasi function is fiber bundles, but now over R. 
So I will also call SG is the fiber, okay? So she observed that the, the fiber is always isotope to embedded stable minimal surface. So the idea is there is this result by mix Simon and Yao, which gives a receipt to obtain uh, minimizing surface on isotopic class. So on this particular case, the surface is incompressible on the meaning that If you look at the inducer map of fundamental groups, this is injected. So, with this condition, the result of mixed signaling allows to control the surgeries on the minimization procedure. So, we can obtain actual isotopic surface, which is minimal. Okay? So, this is a first observation. And this is good because we know that on the Fuchsian model, we have one minimal surface. On these other models, I have one house. So, pulling back, uh, consider a particular model, a particular class of the quasi Fuchsian manifolds, which are called almost Fuchsian. So the, the idea is that he produce uh, the properties of the Fuchsian models for other quasi Fuchsian. So the, the first thing is that each of these almost Fuchsian manifolds, as in the Fuchsian case, admits a unique closed minimal surface. So, there is a, a formal sense where the map the associates to the metric, the surface here is continuous. I, I would just uh, say in an imprecise way. And there is the, this nice characterization in terms of the principal curvatures. Remember, since the surface is minimal, we have essentially just one principal curvature. Okay. So these models are characterized by the, the, the principal curvature of the surface is strictly less than one. And they are equal to zero exactly on the Fuchsian case. And uh, if you, we look at the equidistance of this minimal surface, we obtain our foliation by closed mean convex surface, meaning that so we have the minimal surface, so we have a foliation such that the mean curvature vector of the leaf points on the direction of sigma. Okay. So maybe the, the mean curvature is not constant, by, uh, but I have a good uh, geometric property, which is, is mean convex. Okay. So more about the, the geometry, the, the, uh, uh, a question is the following. So you have the, this particular class of almost function, which you have a unique cause of the surface. So, uh, are these all the quasi Fuchsian manifolds? So the, the answer is no. So these two guys prove that uh, we can, for any positive integer, and we can produce a quasi Fuchsian 3 manifold, which have exactly n, uh, at least n uh, surface isotope to the fiber which are minimal, actually error minimizing. So the picture will be something like this. You have, you have maybe three minimal surfaces, which are isotopic to the final. 
So we we'll see that the, the these models can be very complicated. And another thing uh, we can say is the result by Mazel and Pagado, which is say something about the geometry at the ends. So the result says that the ends are always foliated by CMC surfaces. And the question, uh, the question is, we can extend this foliation to the whole manifold and the answer is, in general, sorry, let me write it, in general, we cannot extend the foliation to M. There are examples where this is not possible. So, so in, in the sense, on this case, the best we can expect is to have a foliation by mi-convex surfaces. Is on the almost focusing case. And, and for the case of the fiber bundles, uh, a question would be, is possible to obtain a foliation by minimum surfaces? So the, this question is natural because there is a result by Sullivan, which characterizes which both the three manifolds uh, at a meta metric where uh, there is a foliation by minimal surfaces. So the, these fiber bundles, by the result of server, there is, a, there is always a metric where you have a foliation by surface which are isotope to the fiber in, and are minimal. But maybe this particular metric where there is this foliation by minimal surface is not the hyperlock metric. So on the same paper, which these guys proved this about quasi focusing models, they also proved that, that the resistance some hyperbolic to trimming folds fiber of the circle, which does not admit a foliation by closed minimal surface. So there is a metric where there is this foliation, but it's not the hyperbolic metric. Okay. So the, the the main question to me here is, okay, how to, what can we say about this compact part here? Okay, I understand the geometry of the ends. What can we say about the compact part? And on the case of the, the hyperbolic to fiber treatment folds, uh, Okay, I don't have a foliation by minimal surface, but maybe I have a foliation by min convex surfaces. So it is another guiding question. So now I can state some of my results with my collaborators. So the first result say is the following. So let's consider the quasi focusing case. So there is a nice decomposition of the stream manifolds in terms of minimal surface. Remember that maybe there are a lot of minimal surface. Unlike the case of, unlike the focusing case, which there is only one minimal surface, maybe there are a lot here. But we can obtain a, a decomposition in the following way. There is a finite number of closed minimal surface, all of which are isotopic to the fiber. These surfaces are either stable or have index one as critical points of the area. And the region between two of the surfaces does not contain any stable minimal surface, which is isotopic to the fiber. And the, the first and the last one are outermost in the fall distance. So let me just consider this picture. So we have this collection. Oh, 
of minimal surface. So outermost means that uh, this is the first surface. Okay, now on this region here, I, I don't have any other minimal surface, which is as I talk to the fiber. And this is the last one on this region here. I don't have any other minimal surface, which is as I talk to the fiber. So this gives us a nice decomposition. And the idea to prove this result is the following. We know that by observation of Uhlenbeck that there is always a stable minimal surface, at least one. Okay. But we can actually guarantee that there are only a finite number of these stable minimal surfaces, which are isotope to the fiber. So this is a result of Anderson. Michael Anderson. So only a finite number. Of uh, index zero surface. Okay, now I let's say this this one is stable, this one is stable. Now how to produce the surface of index one? So the, the idea here is to use the min minimax theory for the area function. And due to time, uh, I won't describe this theory. Maybe in the end, if someone wants to know more, I can say some, some more. Okay. So, okay. Sorry. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, what is the sense of outermost? So there are no others which are isotopic to the fiber or no others with index zero or one? What no, no others, no others which are isotopic to the fiber. N no other minimal surfaces isotopic to the fiber. Yeah, maybe we can have a software complicated like this, which is to crazy things here. So it's not as a to the fiber. Okay, maybe and it spins around, but uh, there is no other which is as a to the fiber. So this is important to this construction. Okay, okay. thank you. So as I was saying, I will not say very much about the minimax theory for the area function due to time. But the idea is that if I have uh, two critical points which are stable for the area function, we can try to do a mountain pass argument to produce a third critical point in the middle. So this is a whole theory which in the last years it was a great development. So the particular result I need is a combination of the work of uh, many people. So essentially, uh, the, the setup is due to Simon Smith. And uh, we need the index estimate by Marcus and Neves. And to actually produce something which is as on top to the original surface, I need this recent result of Kitova Leukopopti song. So if you use this theory, you can produce a minimal surface, which is isotopic to the original fiber. And uh, we know that we, we have index one because of the decomposition. I decompose in, in a region where there is no other stable surface. Okay. So the, the next thing to do is try to foliate the hyperbolic training folks. So now I can see the aquas function model and also the fiber bundle model. So we proved that, that we can actually foliate these models by surfaces which are isotopic to the fiber. And each surface is either minimal or has no vanishing curvature. So on the quasi fuchsia model, so we have something like this. Uh, 
So here I have a leaf. So this surface here is stable. So it is, you can see it's a minimum of the area. So the mean curvature points on this way. And here, this fiber, also the mean curvature has to point on the direction of the area decreases. So the foliation is something like this. You can have here a stable minimal surface, a lot of surfaces where the mean curvature vector points on its direction. So I arrive at the surface of index one, so the direction of the mean curvature vector changes. Okay. So the, the foli and the, here at the end, the foliation will be essentially this foliation of Mazen Pakal by CNC surfaces. And the, on the fiber bundle case, okay, maybe I have a, a stable surface here. Uh, maybe this is a minimal surface of index one, so I have things like this. So the important fact is that uh, this has no vanish mean curvature. So the mean curvature is different from zero for all point on the surface. Okay. So the, this is nice. Of course, I since I know the topology of the, the manifolds, I already had the interest in foliation, but the, the thing is that this foliation he carries geometric information about the hyperbolic geometry. Okay, so here is where the mean coverage flow enters the picture. So the idea to produce these foliations is use the mean coverage flow. So, for example, we can start here at this surface which has index one. So the this tends to decrease the area on the direction of the mean coverage. So you can expect to apply the mean coverage flow, for example, in this region to foliate by surface where the mean coverage vector points on the direction of the stable surface. And then you can do also this, this region. Now, if you have the case of the outermost surfaces, you, you can try to produce the foliation in this way. You take one of the CMC surfaces of Mazeu and Paca. So in this case, I know that the mean curvature like the points uh, in the direction of the compact part of the manifold. So now I can try to foliate using mean curvature for this region between the surface and the, the outermost surface. So in the quasi focusing case, this is the, the roof idea. And on this case, I can open up a longer fiber. I have now a, a metric on the cylinder. And the thing is, if there is no foliation by minimal surfaces, we can prove that there is a decomposition like this. And now we apply the same idea. We produce a foliation on each of these parts of the decomposition. So now that I explained the idea, I will say more precise things about the mean coverage flow. So what is mean coverage flow? The, okay, in the more general setting, consider a closed remaining manifold and an embedded hyper surface. So the mean coverage flow start on the hyper surfaces is a family, a smooth family of maps where the, the first map is the identity, so I begin at the, this hypersurface S, and I move by mean curvature flow. So the velocity of the flow is the mean curvature. 
So the idea is that if I start with a, let's say I have a stable surface here and a mean convex surface, the idea is that uh, I start the flow and I produce a family of surface such that the mean curvature vector points on the direction of the stable mean surface. So, what is the problem? The problem is that, okay, we have a local timing with uniqueness and existence of this flow, but maybe in finite timing the flow might develop a singularity. So, the idea is a picture is something like this. So, maybe there is a, a region such that along the evolution of the flow, the region starts to become very thin and the mean curvature blow up in finite time. Okay. So, uh, so that the flow stops to make sense in finite time. So, to now to continue work, I have to consider weak notions of the flow to be able to do something. So, one of such notions is the so called uh, mean coverage flow with surgery. So, the, the idea is that uh, as we are very close to to the coverage to blow up, so you cut this region where this the curvature is very high. So now I I have here in the picture three pieces. So these two pieces. So you, you do this on this cutting on the region which is above, right? Uh, okay, see. If here I have a dimension n, it will be a n dimension ball. Okay. So we we'll, we'll go a ball here, another ball here, and here. Now I have a three pieces, and I can continue the flow in this way. So I will now enter the details because it's very technical, but the idea is that at least in dimension three. If I begin with a mean convex surface, then there is a well-defined mean curvature flow with surgery, which starts S, meaning that uh, I have just a finite number of surgeries, and then I have a, a, a flow defined for all times. Okay, so this is very technical work, it was done independently by Brendan Hilskin and Hansel Hoffer. And uh, another version, weak version of the mean coverage flow is the so-called level set flow. This is a set theoretic version of the flow. The idea is the following. Uh, here I just consider the dimension because of the no regularity of instructions from geometric mass theory. So now I consider not a not exactly a surface, uh, it can be any closed set. So the idea of the level set flow is to consider the maximum one parameter family of closed sets, which starts on A, such that uh, this will satisfy the so called avoidance, avoidance principle. Okay. Uh, uh, what is this avoidance principle? So, if you start with two uh, sets which do not intersect, so along the evolution, we continue not intersecting. And if you take the union of evolutions, this is the evolution of the union of the sets. So, we can think about uh, Two 
spheres on the Euclidean space, so they are the boundaries of balls. We feel we evolve by the mean curvature flow, so the spheres will shrink. So in, in all the times along the flow, the, the evolution never intersects in this property codes. Okay. So it is in some sense the weakest, the, the maximal weak flow where this property holds. And a key property is that if I start with a set such that the boundary is an embedded hypersurface, so the flow coincides with the class mean curvature flow up to the first singular time. So this is another way of to continue the mean curvature flow uh, along the singularities. Okay. And can, I, can I ask a question there? Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, I'm just curious. Um, so if, if I were to go about a problem like this, I, I'd probably try and set up some, some monotonicity formula along the flow and then establish some epsilon regularity mechanism so that some initial entropy would, uh, would measure how complicated the initial condition is and if it's sufficiently small, meaning if your initial condition is sufficiently symmetric, which seems to be your case, uh, then you could guarantee long time existence. Is this approach at all familiar to you guys? Is this some method you, you like, or is this completely alien? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah actually, uh, what you see is uh, more or less what Brendan Hilskin, what they do. So there is this, this kind of entropy, and the Brendan proved the mon monotonicity formula for the, this quantity, and the mm -hmm. idea of the it's proof uh, is to use this to produce a long time. The, the idea still, of also how... Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, sorry, but I guess th they still get singularity formation in finite time, even with the control on the entropy. Is that right? What they say is that uh, even after you, you, you rescale or you perform some surgery, the next thing is, is going to have an entropy that is not too big. So you can continue a bit further. Is that yeah, how it yeah. goes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the idea is that. Okay, cool. Hasselhoff Aquina has a, a different approach, which uh, mm. is inspired by the work of Ben Andrews. But uh, if you want to think of, of the approach by Brendan Hilsky, this is uh, the whole idea. Okay, I'm very interested in this kind of approach. If you guys are interested in the future, this is this, this is the method I know. The other method seems fantastic to me, but I'm not an expert. The, <laughs> okay, okay. Monotonicity okay, and epsilon regularity are very similar to stuff I do, so that, that's why I'm asking. Okay, I, okay. I only know a few things, so. Okay, we can talk about more in the future. <laughs> cool. Okay, so. When we start to work on this, the motivation was to produce these foliations of hyperbolic manifolds. And the mean coverage flow was natural, a natural thing to try to do. So, uh, first, of all, let's just say something about the level set flow. There is this regularity theory by Brian White. So, on this setting, Brian White considered sets. Which are, which are boundary of some open set. Okay, so you can think it's a hypersurface which bounds some domain of the manifold. So he proved that the evolution by level set flow is both for almost every time and for T larger north, so on an interval like this. Is always smooth, and before it is smooth almost every time. Okay, and the the good thing is that the limit of the flow is exactly what we want. Remember that. Let's see. 
we want to produce a foliation so then we start at the surface which has index one and we arrive at the surface which has a stable critical point so what the level set flow does it is exactly this I, it's proved by Brian White the, so the, the limit with t goes to infinity is a union of stable minimal surfaces and we know that the convergence is with multiplicity one or two. So the idea is that uh, think this is a stable minimal surface, and uh, if the the set is this, this is the boundary of K. So in the evolution, I, I will have leaves which are very close this stable minimal surface in both sides so here the multiplicity is two but well, maybe I have a, a domain like this now here the limit will be a stable minimal surface here but uh, uh, the limit will, will be we have a convergence of leaf just of one side okay uh, sorry uh, I have convergence just by this sign because this one will shrink to the stable minimal surface Okay, so the first thing we proved was to extend the result of Brian White by non separated surface. Remember, this is important to us because I want the foliations of things which are non separated, which is the case of the fiber bundle. So we extend the results of Brian White to this setting. If we start with a, with a non separate surface which has non vanishing curvature, so we can prove that the level set flow is well, well defined and convergence is smoothly, smoothly with finite multiplicity to a stable minimal surface. Okay, so it, this is a, a first result on mean curvature flow. So just to give a sketch of the proof. So the idea is that, okay, I want to start the flow on this surface. So here I have a surface which has minimal area on the homology class of the surface S. Okay, so the idea is that the, the level set flow uh, will arrive at this surface. So the problem is that since the surface is not separated, maybe in this picture, when you start the level set flow, we can actually start to spin around, around the fibers. Okay, so this is a problem. So the idea is to open up the manifold along the surface S. So we have something like this. So I, I do copies of the, this model, so I have a, a covering space of the original manifold. And now the cops of the surface S here, they are separating. So I can use the theory by Brian White. So this is nice. And, and we know that by the avoidance principle that uh, the copies they are disjoint along the flow. So I, I have everything I need. So the idea is to lift up everything to, to this covering space. I can prove that uh, we can actually lift also the minimizing surface. And then we, we use the very white theory on some particular domains of this covering space to prove our, our result. And uh, this is, is general, to choose this, these dimensions. And then in dimension three, we can say more. 
if we start with an incompressible surface, which is the case of the hyperbolic manifolds I am considering, and uh, I have a surface which is incompressible and has no vanishing in curvature, I can say more things about the limit of the level set flow. So I have two parts, one which is diffeomorphic to original surface, or maybe uh, this covers a non-orientable surface in the convergence with multiplicity two. So the limit has this part which is good. In the second part, I can say exactly what happens is, is a union of spheres in projected planes. But remember that the limit is a stable minimal surface. If the curvature is negative, we can prove it using the Gauss equation that there is no minimal surfaces with this topology. So for our case, this is very good. So combining these two results, we can produce defoliation uh, using the idea I described before. Okay. In this picture, I try to foliate the, the regions where I obtain the, the composition. Okay, uh, we stop here. Thank you very much. Uh, well, uh, Enrique has has had to leave, so I will continue as the chair of the talk. Uh, so I would like to ask if there is a, any question or comment for Vanderson. No. So maybe I can ask, uh, why is the, this restriction on the dimensions of the manifold between three and seven? Okay, uh, this is, go back here. Okay, on this, on this result of Brian White, he has to use GMT, geometric measure theory. So okay. this is a known restriction that uh, if the dimension is greater than or equal to 8, so usually in the head of the theory, what you want to obtain is that the limit uh, has house of dimension which is less than or equal to n minus 8. So maybe you have something on the limit which is this move outside a set with the, this house, house of dimension. Okay. 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 Great. And uh, maybe I can ask, um, you said in your result that there is a finite multiplicity. Yeah, yeah. Good is, question. Is there some upper bound for, for that multiplicity? Yeah, yeah. Because on, on the Separate case, the multiplicity is always one or two, but there are examples of the no separate case. It's, very, it's a very complicated picture where we have, for example, multiplicity three. But uh, I would say that uh, in general, on this setting, on all this generality, you can, you can also say, okay, you have this upper bound on the multiplicity, but for, for example, here on yeah. for hyperbolic three manifolds, I can say something about the yeah. multiplicity, be assuming this topological condition, which is being incompressible. Okay, so to, to say something about the upper bound of the multiplicity, I have to, to ask more of the, the model, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you. Very good question. <laughs> Is there any other question or, or comment or remark? Yeah, but if this is not